the code that we're going to be working on uh, is actually it's going to have a starting project for it. We're not going to be starting it from scratch today. Uh, so if you pull down the code from GitHub, and I'll put a link in the description of this video, um, there is a folder for 412, and there is a folder here. You're going to see another one when this one is done, um, but there's one called Ice Cream Shop Start, and that's going to be the code that we start with. Uh, if you don't want to follow along and uh, type the code as I type it, as I said, there'll be another folder there with the completed version as well. Uh, and so this is different from the previous uh, lecture example in that I took out the other flavors here. I think we had like bacon and um, coffee and stuff like that. Um, instead, I put a text box. Uh, and that's so that's going to allow the user to type in any flavor that they want. And then I have another label down here for which will be the special order right here. And so what we have now is instead of having radio buttons, we're going to give them the ability to type something in. And what that's going to do for us is we're going to work with a different conditional statement. Um, existing conditional statements that we have been working with are ifs and else ifs and nested ifs. Uh, we're going to be working with something called a switch statement. Uh, other languages call it a select case. Uh, we're also going to be uh, doing a little work with using the AND operator uh, and talking about things called logical operators uh, in programming. Okay, and so what I have here, and I'm just going to run this to show you what it's doing before we write any code, is when and clicking other, we'll have this group box show up. And what we want here is we want we don't want just the user to be able to type anything and it works. We want them to be able to do a real flavor but it is free text so we could use a bunch of if statements and else statements um, to see if they've typed in a flavor that we actually have we wouldn't accept bad spelling and we wouldn't accept uh, just gobbledygook like this so what we want to do is we're going to go into our and we can click on one of these radio buttons because that's where we have the code that's firing off that's checking to see what the user wants and I see we have our update flavor function. I'm going to right click this go to definition Oops. there we go and scroll down and we have uh, a block of code right here that says else if r b other checked. Now this code is going to fire every time uh, someone checks one of the radio buttons uh, and every time someone is typing inside of that text box. So we're going to have some code right here where we can evaluate it. Now, although we have all this other code going on, um, we can just hit enter a couple times, give ourselves some room to work, and we can kind of recreate our normal line of code that we do. And so we would say declare variables. Zoom in here get user input logic and out put to user so this stuff still applies even though we're inside of some other code um, this really is an individual problem that we're trying to solve so what can we do well the first thing we need is to get the other flavor that the user entered in so we would say string str other equals string dot empty and now we can get that out of the text box which we know how to do str other equals txt other that's the name of our text box that I added in and then our logic well what do we know how to do well let's say for example we were going with our flavors that we did last time we did pistachio uh, coffee and bacon and so we would test to see if it equals coffee, else if it equals bacon, else if it equals pistachio. So we know how to do this. So I would say if str other equals equals, that's our equality operator, and then in quotes I could say um, coffee. And then close my if block out. So what we're doing is we're comparing this string uh, with the other one. 
and then we would help set our message here. Let's keep going though. Let's do the other ones. Else if str other equals, and then we had a bacon flavor. And I'll put a comment here, set message. And then lastly, else if str other equals, and then we had for our last one, pistachio. And so we have the ability to test for three different flavors here. Now, going into my form, you'll see I have a special label right here. Um, and so what I want to put here is here there'll be a message that says there has been a special order and here we'll say what the special order flavor is and I want to split this out because we're going to use this to illustrate a different concept later so because that really is uh, two different things um, for right now we're just going to set our string message Oops. To say, oops, not in here. Um, inside of here, we will say one scoop special order. We're going to say for all three of these. Okay, so this is all right, but we're getting real popular, and we want to add some other flavors. Um, and so what we could keep doing is we could say, uh, else if, and then if we had another flavor, uh, what's another one? We could say um, blue moon, right? And we could keep going. But there's something to acknowledge here, and that is that we keep asking the same question, um, but in such a sense that we're still checking the same variable every time here. And every time it's like that. So when you have this unique situation with an else if, and you're only checking one variable, um, we can actually simplify this. We can simplify this in the sense that we can use a different conditional statement called a switch statement. And this is what a switch statement would look like. I'm going to enter down a couple times and we say switch and then the variable that we want to keep testing. And then open brace, close brace. So this tells uh, our .NET that we're going to be checking this variable over and over again. But how do we check it for specific values? Well, we say case. You're saying, in this case, do this. We say case, then the value. In this case, it's string. And then you put a colon, enter, and I'm going to leave a line here, enter, break. And so what this is going to do is if string other equals coffee and notice how I'm saying it. I'm saying if because it's really acting the same way uh, an if statement would an else, if else uh, but we're doing a little bit of a different syntax it's a replacement for an if else as long as you keep asking the same question each time and then in this case we would say string message equals uh, one scoop special order Okay, let's do the next one. Case. Let's do our bacon. String message equals one scoop special order. And then break. And break is kind of like that closing curly brace. And we need this in here. If you don't put this in here, and actually let me show you. I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to do build here. And you're going to get this error message, and it's going to say, cannot fall through one case label, and it'll even tell you, case coffee to another. And that's what it's for, is break is a way of it exiting out on this switch statement. So you need that in there. Okay? 
Let's put our other ones in here. Bacon, uh, pistachio. Break. And then lastly, case. And what do we have? Uh, blue moon. And then lastly, break. Now, this is sort of redundant, right? Because we just keep doing this. What are we getting here? I think that's my old error message. There we go. We keep, we're really just doing the same thing. Uh, this isn't very interesting yet. So, remember we have this label special order here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another string that holds this flavor in. So, I'm going to go all the way to talk to my function um, because there's a question of scope. If I declared this variable inside here, um, it wouldn't be accessible outside. So I'm going to put it right after string message. I'm going to say string. I'm just going to call it string other flavor. No, no, no. String other message. That would make more sense. String dot empty. And then going back down, we're going to say string other message equals let's say one scoop now remember our uh, string operations well I want to take us and I want to make it a nice sentence so I want to take that one scoop plus and then string other because we know that if it found it it's just going to put that value in there and if you don't like this we could actually go coffee too Suppose for the sake of this, it might make more sense. So we'd say one scoop coffee. I'm going to copy this down. I'm going to say one scoop bacon. Pistachio. And blue. Now, this part's this is kind of redundant here. So here's a little trick. We can take this and we can move it out so that before we get to our switch statement it sets this value and watch what I'm gonna do I'm gonna delete all these from here and so for all of these they're gonna have the same message but what happens if we don't have a flavor where's our else so we did else and we did else ifs uh, before well what happens if it's none of these well we can use something called the default we say it's a default case you type default instead of case we put a break in there and all I want to do is now say str other message equals and we'll say uh, sorry we do not carry that flavor because we want to have some sort of message that lets them know that whatever they typed in it wasn't right Okay, we can get rid of our else ifs here. Okay, one scoop special order. And what we should have here is this should actually be string message. I had it as string other, so let's try this again. And we would say bacon, there we go. Okay. Now, what if the user typed in, um, say, capital B? Well, it doesn't find that because capital B, A C O N, is not the same thing as lowercase. And what we are checking is in fact lowercase so what we want to do is right here in string other we can actually say dot two lower on it and this just like anything else we put inside parentheses evaluates out to a certain value so this if this was capital B A C O N this would turn it all into lowercase and if you look all the flavors we're checking 
are lowercase. So that's actually going to work. Let's try again here. Go to other. I could do it all in caps now and it's still going to work. Okay. Well, what's next? I want to display um, down here, I want to display what the special order actually is. And we've been putting it inside of string other message. So, down here, uh, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom where I have, and I can get rid of this one. We don't want that. Down here, where we have output to user, and we're doing LBL message.txt, I'm going to say LBL special order.txt equals string other message which is what we had going. So now, looking good, and I'm going to say bacon, and there we go, one scoop bacon. And then now all of that gets cleared out when I pick one of the other ones. So let's try something else. We say coffee, there we go, one scoop of coffee. Let's try pistachio. And that's all working too. So I think uh, that we can take this a little bit farther. And what I want now is business is so good, we're going to start letting them double up. Right? We're not letting them mix and match their flavors, but they can get two scoops of chocolate, two vanilla, two strawberry, or two of the other. So we have to add onto our interface uh, a text box. Move all this over. Whoops. Move this all over. I want to add a text box um, for like a quantity. And what we're going to do is if they leave it blank or if it's just kind of gibberish, um, we're just going to assume one scoop. But if not, then we're going to give them a different message. I'm going to make my font here a little bigger. I'll change this out and we'll say um, say number of scoops. A nice looking form now, right? And then this will call this one TXT Scoops. Okay, so what can we do? Let's uh, let's just run it and see what we're looking at here. And so what I want uh, is if someone said two, I want this to say two scoops of chocolate or two scoops of vanilla. Right now it says one scoop. That's going to be the default. Um, or if they say one. So let's think about what we got to do. Well, first, let's just worry about changing this number here um, so that that quantity is accurate. And so we're going to go to the top of our update flavor and we need another variable. We need, let's say int, and let's say int scoops. Start out at zero. Okay, we can do that get the user input okay we know that uh, try parse is the way to go so we're going to say in 32.try parse txt scoops dot text comma out and scoops that's going to get our number so now int scoops is where we're going to be okay and gosh now we have all of this and if you look it's all kind of built into it, isn't it? Everything says one scoop, one scoop, one scoop. So what we can do instead is we can be sneaky and we can take off that number on each one. We're taking off the number off of each message. So now the message just says scoop coffee, scoop bacon, scoop pistachio. Or if you go up here, scoop of chocolate, scoop of vanilla. Okay, we got to be sneaky. That's what a lot of programming is. We say it's smoke and mirrors. It's magic. 
So we're going to scroll down to where we're actually setting the display right here. This is why we all do it in one spot, right? And we say, because I know this has the flavor, I say here in scoops dot to string. We're going to change it to a string. And now we're going to add it in front of that message. We're going to do the same thing here. Int scoops. Int scoops plus. Okay, uh oh. Well, it says zero. We're better off than we were before. Let's put a one here. Let's put a two. Okay, two scoop, two scoop. All right, well, we got the numbers down, but that's not quite right because uh, it's not giving us anything that's looking too good. So, what we should probably do here is we want an if statement. And we're going to say if. And this is around our output in scoops. Whoops. Let's say if int scoops is greater than one. Because remember, if we get bad input, uh, it's going to be a zero. If the user types in one, then we don't really care about doing this. So we're going to say if int scoops is greater than one, do this else. Do this. I'm going to copy this down. And we can just hard code that in. We can say one plus. We can say one plus. Alright, one scoop, one scoop. Woof. But look it. It's looking better. Right? We got two here. Except now it says two scoop of chocolate. Okay, so we can do that better. And also, right here, that's not looking so good either uh, because that says it even though that message is empty. So inside of our first one here, we want to nested if. And this one, we only want to say this. We say if rb other dot checked equals to right we only want to display that other message if that radio button has been selected if not we don't want to show it same thing for down here we're going to say if rb other dot checked equals true then and only then show the string other message okay Oof, okay, still not so great, <laughs> uh, but we're getting there, right? Let's do bacon. Okay, that one looks nice. Cool. Everything's looking good. Now what do we got? Well, we got this whole idea of scoop or scoops. That's what we want, and this one's still not working so great. That's okay. We'll get it all worked out. So what do we got here? Well, we can do the same kind of smoke and mirrors that we can take scoop off of everything. I'm going to leave that leading space. And I'm just going down the line and just deleting everywhere. I'm double clicking and deleting everywhere that says scoop. What do we need? Well, we got a couple things. First, we're checking to see if it's greater than one. Um, and then we're checking to see that if RB is checked, uh, and now we have to check to see how many scoops we want to show. So it's getting kind of complicated. Um, and we could keep doing uh, these nested ifs. Um, or we, we can start doing is we can do something called an AND statement. Uh, and what an AND statement does is it lets us ask two questions at the same time. Um, but the thing about it is that both of those questions have to be true. Because what we have here is something that will evaluate to true or false. So for example, if I wanted to ask this question along with this one, it would look like this. I would say ampersand, this is shift 7, ampersand, ampersand, and then rb other 
dot checked equals true. Now look at what happens here. These are two different questions. Int scoops is greater than one. That can be true or false. And RB other dot checked can be true or false as well. So then what do we get is we have something that would look like this. If this was two scoops and the other was checked, it would look like this. It would say if true and true. That's what this would evaluate to, because this would evaluate to true or false, and so would this. And so the way that an AND statement works is that we then take this and we evaluate if that is true or false. And how an AND statement works is that both of these have to be true, and then it will the whole statement will be true. So here's some comments. I'll show you what it would look like, right? We would say this. We'd say true and true equals true. False and true equals false. True and false equals false. And then, of course, the other possibility, false and false equals false. And so the only time the whole thing can be true and end up being true is if both of those are. If even one of them is false, the whole thing is false. And so what would this look like? Well, we're checking this out. I'm just going to throw this out here. And so what are we checking in this case? We're saying if int scoops is greater than 1 and rb is checked, then string other message, oops, txt, LBL special order dot text equals int scoops dot two string plus that's a number we would say scoops plus str other message right so we're really building some stuff here let me clear this out. So what are other possibilities? Well, we can do else ifs, and we can use our and statements there as well. So we say if, else if, int scoops is greater than 1, and rb other dot, dot checked does not equal true. I'm going to copy this whole line here, and it's going to say, okay, int scoops dot true string, we can keep that, and we would say scoop one scoop. Wait, no that's not true. My mistake. We say LBL message because we're displaying on the other one. We're not doing a special order. Multiple scoops and then string message. What else is possible? Else if int scoops we would say less than or equal to 1, right? If it's greater than 1, that's one thing, but if it's less than or equal, that means that they typed in 1, they typed in 0, or they didn't type anything at all, and our triparfs gave them a 0. So then we would say rb other dot checked equals true. Now I can copy this one because we're talking special order, but it's a single scoop. And then lastly, all the other possibilities, int scoops is less than or equal to 1, and rb other dot checked does not equal true. And now I'm going to copy this one here. And in this case, label message, single scoop. Before we do anything else, because there's so much stuff going around, I'm going to clear these labels out. Because uh, I don't know what's going to be left over in them. And then each time something happens, it gives us the ability to start from scratch. Alright, let's see what happens. 
Zero scoop of chocolate, okay. Uh, probably want to work on that. Zero scoop vanilla. Zero scoop, okay. Bacon. Zero scoop bacon. Let's see if we can trigger this. I think we probably want to do an on text change here. One scoop bacon. Okay, so what we should do is here where it's less than or equal to one, instead of pulling out the value out of our variable, we can just hard code this in because that's what we want. And we talked about if it's zero, we're going to force them to take one scoop. Same thing here. Boom, one scoop. Okay, let's try that. One scoop of chocolate, vanilla. Okay, other, go to bacon. Okay, getting there. We're getting there. I'm going to put an on text change fire inside of that text box here. Right here, double click that text box. And all I'm going to do is then I'm going to call that function that we're already calling. And the same thing is going to fire on that. Now, that's what's great about functions, is we can just keep calling it everywhere. So let's try this. I should be able to just type 2. Four, nothing. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Same thing here. Six scoops bacon. Six scoops bacon. Okay. So I'm going to start over here. I'm just going to run it again. This is all working. We're happy with this. But this is not. So what we should do is inside of this other. Uh, we should check to see if this is empty or not. And if it's empty, then don't display anything. So where could we do that? Uh, well, probably in our update flavor function. So I'm going to go to definition. Let's scroll down. And this is a specific case. And once you have a lot of ifs going on, um, you really got to check and kind of walk through it. So, okay, we just did all that down here in our output. This is really, output can can get very conditional depending on what it is that your client wants you to do. So what is the case? Well, we said if RB other is checked, okay, but this one is if it's greater than one. Um, and then down here, if it's less than one is checked. But that's not really the problem because it says one scoop. What we are checking is if the input is empty, right? So right here, if I say other, it's saying one scoop, but there's nothing in here, which means there's nothing inside the message either. So what we could do is we could add another test. So whereas we are saying int scoop is greater than one, and RB checked is true, we can actually put another and on here. And what that could be is and we could say string other message does not equal string dot empty. What we're saying is make sure that string isn't empty. We want this statement to be true. And as long as all of these, remember that's how ands work, all of them have to be true. As long as all of them are true, then this will execute. Same thing down here on the other one. Int scoops is less than or one. RB other checked is true. Okay. And string other message does not equal string dot empty. And there we go. So now, if we had sat down and we planned this whole application out, the code would probably be uh, a little more straightforward. But this this happens. Um, this happens is you'll have a great, solid application that's working beautifully, and another requirement will come around, or another feature needs to be added. And so you try and work within the confines of what you got to get it working. But usually what you do is then you sit down and you say, okay, well, how could I have done it better? I know it's possible. But what can I do uh, to make this a little more streamlined? Because there's a lot of stuff going on here. And ifs, 
really shouldn't be this complicated. So we, sh we should probably uh, sit down and just kind of write out what it is that we wanted to do, um, what all the rules are, and then make sure our if statements are matching uh, up with that. And we've never really faced that problem with our code before, in that you know we, we either write the calculation or we don't, we either get the input from the user or we don't, but we haven't really had this much of a complicated uh, program flow. Um, and that's because programs usually mirror something that happens in real life, and real life and how businesses are run can get pretty complicated. Um, so it's great having this in our tool belt, um, but you can see it can kind of get a, a, away from you. Um, and we'll be doing more examples of maybe how to streamline this. But uh, to review what we did talk about today is we have the AND statement. We call this a logical operator. The equal sign and the greater than sign, we'd say those are relational operators. They compare two values. This one is a logical operator. Logic is when you get into ANDs and evaluating if the whole statement is true or uh, if the whole statement is false. We also talked about our switch statement. And a switch statement works great for when you keep asking the same question over and over again. You could also use this for numbers. It doesn't have to be just with strings. Um, we could have a double in here as well. And in that case, it would say case, oops, it would look like this. It would be like case one, and it would look like case two. Um, I'm getting a compile error because it knows that that's a string. But that's what that would look like. Um, and so you could have a different behavior uh, for all the way up from, from 1 to 100 if you wanted to because that's how switch statements work. But what they're meant to be is if you have an if statement and it's if, else if, else if, else if, and it keeps going and you just keep asking the same variable and doing different comparisons, um, this is meant to simplify that. And it does read a little better than just having that if and the else if statements. So these are two things that we've added to our if statements. Um, it makes our programs a little more complicated, but it also gives us a lot more possibilities on what it is that our programs can actually do now.